Hello everyone. Um, so, as you know, uh, I did a few videos, you know, previously, maybe about three weeks ago, a month ago, about uh, removing a Toyota transmission, changing it. So, I did remove it, and uh, it took the guy three weeks to finally get the transmission done. And um, I guess you get what you pay for. I paid 600 bucks. He rebuilt the... Uh, the torque converter. I mean, for my my favorite transmission shop, they charge 200 bucks just for that. But uh, this guy, he rebuilt the uh, transmission and the torque converter for 600 bucks. It took a lot longer, but hey, you know, you get what you pay for. I'm glad it's done. And um, so I picked it up, and and uh, now I pretty much got it in, but. Uh, I started off with the video this morning and I don't know what happened to it. It must not take in. So, um, anyway, so there's some footage there that I just lost. Don't know what happened to it. So, but I did capture quite a bit. And, um, you know, as, as you can see here, it's, uh, it's, it's not installed completely. I'm getting there. I just want to show you these support mounts. Once I, I had the ratchet straps and the gap tightened up, I, I put these support mounts in and I took the ratchet straps off. And the reason I was making this video besides showing uh, the world how to change a transmission on a Toyota pickup truck, um, I'm, this is also answering to Lightbrite. Um, She's giving away a uh, some kind of suspension parts for a Jeep Wrangler JL, and yeah, next year I'd like to buy a Jeep Wrangler JL myself. And um, you know, if I can get some parts for it in advance, that's cool too. So, um, and she says that uh, you have to pay it forward. You know, show that you're making the world a little bit better. Well. This, this truck is not mine. <laughs> My dad paid for the transmission to get redone. Um, and I'm doing all the, uh, the, uh, the, the labor of getting it out, putting it back in. I'm also throwing in the ATF fluid, motor oil, filter, you know, that kind of stuff. Just small incidental stuff. Getting her, her tires changed out. But um, anyway coming up in the, in the video that I'm going to be editing here um, are the different steps to get to where I'm at now. Um, after too many little grease marbles in my hair, <laughs> I just I had, to, I had to quit for the day. I got to go take a shower, especially once I got a little grease marble in my eye. That, that pretty much did it. So I'm, I'm at a place where, you know, it's time to relax. I, I've been at it since 6 in the morning. So I quit at about 2 p.m. Just time to relax. But anyway, so I'm going to upload this. Hopefully Lightbrite sees that um, I'm trying to make the world a better place. This uh, transmission job is for my cousin who's got cancer. She got uh, lost her job, got evicted, all that stuff. And her, her uh, Toyota was going to get towed away because uh, it was parked out in the street. So I... Volunteered my driveway, so um, my other cousin had it towed here, and um, now I've been taking steps to make it right again, and um, that's that's what I'm doing to uh, you know make the world a little bit better place. And I know that previously, as previously, I, this is my ZJ over here. But uh, the whole thing got started because this vehicle, I, I took the engine out, the, the Jeep MJ, it's a 1990, I'm an original owner. So I took the engine out and had it rebuilt and put it back in. And then my dad's like, oh, I know how to, <laughs> I know how to change that out. But anyway, so I, uh, last year I put this lift kit in and then uh, someone else was interested. I, I uh, put his... Uh, lift kit in just like is and um, you know paying it forward 
didn't charge him a thing you know so that's you know kind of stuff i do just you know my good fortune just pass it on to others getting this transmission ready you know hopefully she'll be able to drive it give her a little bit of I mean, her whole world was negative, and uh, hopefully this will be a little bit positive. Maybe uh, get her spirits up and uh, give her a reason to live. The world isn't out to get her. So, anyway, um, coming up is uh, getting the transmission into position like it is now. All right, talk to you later. All right, so I took that support mount back out. It's sitting right there, the four bolts that were holding it. I've just had them finger tight. Um, still need to clear the uh, transmission of the flywheel. So I'm gonna try going over here. And uh, pump the jack a little bit. Oh shit, that sucks. Damn it. See that? I, that's that's my problem. Can't do this by myself. It's me and the Lord. That's it. Alright. See what we can do. Check this out. <laughs> so, here I am. Still by myself. And I was just trying to level it out. Keep it from falling off the thing. So I started tightening the ratchet strap that I had for just as an emergency. Turns out, uh, that's what's actually <laughs> brought it up and I've lifted it up this much more. So, what I'll do is just, that's already cleared the flywheel. So, there I go. I'm going for it. <laughs> See what happens. Uh oh, that doesn't sound right. It's going in. Let's see how the vehicle's being picked up. So you see, this ain't easy. All trying to fulfill a promise. All right, later. So before I get too far down the road, just to show you what I've done so far. Um, well, I lowered this jack a couple of notches, and I'm about to lower this jack a couple of notches. The uh, jack I'm using for the transmission is tapped out. It can't go any higher. So now. I'm gonna head and put this board back so when the vehicle lands, it'll tilt the, uh, the engine up back to where it'll be aligned for the uh, transmission. That's uh, part of uh, getting the alignment right and making it to where you can align it, otherwise you're struggling. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm about to lower it. See what happens. And carefully. Oh man. Look. Did I get it? It's coming slowly. One thing you do not want to go fast on. This is sketchy as stuff. I'll go see over here real quick. Alright, cool. It landed. 
landed. That one's okay too. All right, we're in. So I'll go ahead and take this jack out. And we're free. Cool. All right. All right, let's see what else we got. And it looks like, looks like we're ready for the uh, torque converter. So I'll get started on that. All right, this is a little quick update. I got the torque converter in. Had to find that sweet spot. It was not easy. So, just so you can see, I had it in this angle. The, uh, just below the uh, flywheel. Get it in there. And then uh, make sure when you rotate this thing, you get it all the way, line up those two those two tabs, get it all the way in there. I've heard stories that if you don't get it all the way in there, you can mess up the pump. So anyway, that's basically where I'm at with this. So I got the uh, torque converter in. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and crank this up. See if I can start that now. And then <clears throat> from here, I'm just gonna put these uh, six bolts. I bought these at uh, Ace Hardware. These are 10.9s. <clears throat> They're supposed to be like a grade nine. <clears throat> 1.25 M8. The number for that, uh, the stock one's at M8 by 1.25 and the, uh, the only thing I could find that with the right strength was 10.9. These are actually stronger, but um, you know this thing doesn't have that much torque. If you if you look at the little Toyota ones, they're supposed to be. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got one right here, so I could show you. <clears throat> so this is what this was wrong. See this right here? It's got a little nine on there. It's a weird looking nine. And that's the symbol that it's supposed to be. They didn't have any at Ace. And these also are too short. I don't know where they got them. But uh, there's another nine. Another nine. Another nine. So it had three, mostly correct. And then this pot metal one and another pop metal one and they were obviously different ones when I when I was pulling them off the last one broke and uh, so there I was having to find the right bolt anyway so I, f I found those <coughs> these are stronger at Ace Hardware I think they were $1.50 each something like that maybe actually less I think it maybe it was $1.25 and then the uh, the washers, the lock washers are 25 cents each. So that's what I got. And now it's time to hook the flywheel up to the torque converter. So that's uh, basically what my next step is. All right, talk to you later. All right, here's another update. Back to my old shenanigans of ratchet straps. So I tied a, a ratchet strap to here and to here, to the front, uh, so I guess that's some sort of frame frame uh, mount or whatever but <clears throat> I ran the uh, ratchet strap all the way to the back of the uh, transmission one on the left one on the right <clears throat> of course that's my safety and the one that helped lift it up it's another ratchet strap so I got that there and if you look back here 
got this ratchet strap. There's the left one, left and right. Oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Figure it out a little bit. So, anyway, so. The reason I did the ratchet straps was because I'm struggling to line up the torque converter to the flywheel. And I just can't pull that last little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and ratchet strap it. And there we go, see that? That was the the right. There we go. Doing the left, pulling it up, pulling it closer. And now it's anybody's guess to, to line it up. It's gonna. It's not easy. But anyway, just so you know, little shenanigans that I've done. <laughs> Ratchet straps. Very very important part of your tool chest especially if you're gonna do this on your own like me we're on my own me a couple of jacks and some ratchet straps I got I got one more hanging here so, didn't quite need that and I got two more and then actually I got another set right here and that goes with me on the trail. So far I haven't used it on the trail, but if I ever do, it's ready. All right, make it easy. All right, so here I'm getting these bolts for the flywheel and torque converter in. So let's see. So I'm using the big pry bar to get it in. So I've already started them, so I've been rotating them for a while. Of course I had to start off without the washers, and then after a while, I had to, uh, so I got two of those in without washers, and then rotated them in with washers. But without the washers, it gives you that extra length that you need to get it in. 20 foot pounds is what, what this is going to. I'm just, just showing you real quick what I'm doing. Yeah, this ain't easy. <laughs> it's like I need three hands. Alright, so, so. These are 13 millimeter bolts that, that they had. I think they were 12, the Toyota ones, but the ones at Ace Hardware, those are 13s. So, anyway. And I got the torque wrench set for 20 foot pounds. And usually these flywheel rotates on me, just getting it to 20 foot pounds. So I need the uh, pry bar to keep it from rotating. Alright, just, I'm just gonna do this one. Hopefully it clicks and without rotating. So you can see. Oh boy, there it goes, it's rotating. This ain't easy. <laughs> it's not easy. And it's rotating out of view. Okay, I heard a click. And the washer, it's a lock washer, it's been crushed, so that's a good thing. I see it's kind of hard getting the phone in there. I have to see that. This is not easy. Anyway, I just wanted you guys to see that. All right, take it easy. All right, everyone, another little quick update where we're at here. So, 
just to kind of go back to where we were with the uh, torque converter. Um, so those bolts, the crush washers, you know, the, the lock washers, I didn't like the pattern of them. So I ended up actually uh, crushing them down to 25 and then that, I still didn't like the pattern of it. And uh, I ended up going to 30 foot pounds on these and it had a good pattern that I liked. So I went with it. And then uh, as I was uh, hitting the ratchet straps back and forth, as you can see, it goes from the front up here to the back over there and the right front up here all the way to the right rear area back there so I was applying enough pressure you know, to try to get this you know this uh, ear to to get closer and line up line up the uh, little plate here and this plate is very important a lot of people don't know but it if if your hardware is missing on this um, it actually helps strengthen or stiffen the bell housing a lot of people don't know that, so it's very important to have all your hardware around your bell housing. That uh, keeps it from stressing out and cracking. So anyway, to, to, to finally seat the torque converter to the uh, to the transmission, I I ended up spinning with the pry bar. Yeah, pry bar. I, I ended up spinning it about two times, two and a half times, round and round and round, before it finally went clunk. And yeah, you have a nice small gap that, that's easily reachable for the bolts. So it's it's completely seated now. And that's the hard part. And I've seen people struggle, but, uh, and I've struggled on it myself in the past, but <clears throat> the trick that I do is the ratchet straps. Tighten it up, tighten it up, and that that gives you enough uh, little pressure. Oh, look at that! See, now it's really seated. Gives you enough pressure, yeah, but you have to have a good good balance of of uh, pressure. And as you're rotating the uh, torque converter, you'll you'll feel and hear the distinctive clunk. And that's how you know you're in there. And then, then uh, you finish it up by tightening up the ratchet straps to full tight. And uh, look at this. Look at this gap. That's that's the dream of. Look at that. See, easy, 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 easy. And uh, I've seen people struggle. And yeah, it is a it is a pain. But for me, what works is these ratchet straps. I know it's hokey, but it works. It kept. It, it actually lifted the, the transmission up for me. I didn't know that. I learned that just a little while ago. Uh, you know, trying to get it in, get the, uh, the transmission up through the cross member. I picked it up and uh, I set it in front of the uh, front of the oil pan here, and that actually is what brought the whole transmission up and allowed me to bring it up and uh, you know back and forth. It was a lot of uh, wiggling involved, but but uh, hey, it got the job done. It's in from here. It's gonna be, you know, it's it's gonna be a whole lot easier from here. So yeah, I could uh, now take this uh, this wood out. Well, actually, first I'll put the bolt in. Put get some of these bolts started. Then I'll go ahead and uh, take the two drywall screws off of this wood and uh get this you know the engine's gonna be seated but i'm gonna have to lift up the back end and get the uh the rear transmission mount in and uh yeah that's it's to, from here whew, i know i got less than a day's work left so that's gonna be cool yeah so yeah today's sunday um yeah maybe by tomorrow by monday i'll Set this thing down. I'll go get some tires tomorrow, and uh, 
you know, go to my, my good buddy T and J on Prairie in Inglewood or Hawthorne, whatever that is, and um, get some tires. And then, uh, oh, drive it over to my cousin, see if uh, she's ready to drive yet or not. I doubt it, but uh, at least the vehicle is ready for her, and that'll be cool. So, anyway. That's it for now. I, I think uh, I've covered it. You guys should know. This this should help out tremendously on if you guys are uh, going to be changing a Toyota transmission. So, and this this some of the lessons here apply to Jeep, but the beauty is Jeep you can remove the cross member. If you can do a Toyota, you can definitely do a Jeep. But if you can do a Jeep, yeah. <laughs> it's a struggle to do a Toyota no matter what. So there you go. All right. Take it easy, everyone.